Bold and Beautiful, 4568-54-2005. Children get off to school okay? Yeah. Would you like me to give you a ride anywhere? Well, if you're thinking about opening your practice again, maybe now is a good time to go around and see if there's any available office space. I hadn't really decided when I start seeing patients again. Although there is some research I'd like to do. I'd like to figure out what kind of a woman sleeps with her husband's brother the day after she thinks he's died. I thought you said last night that you weren't going to get into that. I said that I felt comfortable with whatever decision Rich would make. That's what I said. But it doesn't mean I condone the things you've done. You know, I've studied all kinds of sexual disorders. But in all the time that I've done that research, I have never come across this particular pathology. I don't know, maybe you could shed a little light on it for me. Maybe uh, you could tell me how it is, you know, thinking that your husband had just died. You can become aroused by his brother. I wasn't aroused in the foundry. Then what happened? Ridge seems to think that Nick's to blame. Is he? Is Nick some kind of deranged sexual predator who took advantage of you when you were most vulnerable? No, no, Nick is not deranged. Well, that's a relief, seeing how he's about to marry your daughter. So, if Nick is not responsible for this, then who exactly would be? I don't know, could it be you? No one is responsible, Taylor. It's not a matter of blame. This is what really disturbs me about you, Brooke, okay? No matter what has happened, no matter who gets hurt, no one is to blame, especially not you. The only problem with that kind of logic is that it leaves no reasonable explanation, okay? I would really love to hear one. I would really love for you to tell me how, how this whole thing happened. Good morning. <laughs> That's what I need, a little ray of sunshine. Hmm, nice to know somebody still loves me. Well, uh, Thomas asked me for a full-time job as a designer. Well, what did you tell him? Well, I had to say no. I mean, I let him down as gently as I could. I told him to get a couple of more years of design school under his belt. Oh, and, Dad, you know, that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, but Thomas didn't think so. He's just anxious to study with the master who created the most exquisite wedding gown any girl could ever dream of. <laughs> I'll never forget seeing you in that gown. I was so, I was so moved. I think Nick actually had uh, tears in his eyes, too. See what a gorgeous wedding gown can do? Nobody saw the dress. He just saw you, your goodness, your beauty. I'm glad you and Nick found each other. So am I. <laughs> Stephanie, you wanted to see me about something? Hello, Nick. Yes, of course. Come in. Okay. How do I get the feeling I'm entering the lion's den? I don't know. Why do you? I asked you over because I wanted to discuss with you using my home for your wedding. Your home? Mm -hmm. Oh, funny. Bridget thought that you might take that offer back. Now, why would I do that? Well, she mentioned that you two had a little tiff 
So for you to offer your home like this and be all hugs and kisses seems a bit strange. We've had our tiffs before. What we disagree about right now is her mother's place in Ridge's life. But we're all entitled to our opinions, aren't we? Absolutely. I understand you're taking the side of the ex-dead wife. Well, of course I would take Taylor's side. Why wouldn't I? Come on, Stephanie. You really don't want to start a fight with me, too, do you? Sally, just think about what you're proposing here. Poaching another forester for Spectra fashions? This is not a good idea. Well, you know something, Bucky? You're absolutely right. It is not a good idea. It is a fantastic idea. It is a splendid idea. It is fascinating, and it's got me on fire here. Having Thomas Forrester as part of our team is going to put this company right over the top. And if Eric Forrester continues to be so blind to his grandson's enormous talent... What talent? We haven't seen any of this kid's work. We don't even know if he can put a line down on paper. If he can write his signature on a piece of paper, that is good enough for me. I tell you, I love this kid. I'm in love with him already. Now, what we need is a real designer with real talent, real experience, who can give us a real line. A name alone isn't going to do us any good, even if the name is Forrester. Oh, for Pete's sake. Fuck. Thomas! Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, absolutely a big surprise. Come in, sit down. You said you needed to talk to me? Yes, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I need something, Thomas. And you are the only person I could think of who could help me. You want my help? Well, you know the kind of fantastic operation we have here at Spectra. Not only are we the final word when it comes to high fashion, we're just a very amusing, fun place to work. Wouldn't you say that, Clark? Hmm? Don't you love working here? Love it. Still, we are not without certain challenges. I mean, ever since Amber left, well, we've been searching far and wide for a special kind of designer. Somebody who can really feel the teen vibe. Vibe? Yes, yes. Someone who has their finger on the pulse of the teen market. And of course, I immediately thought of you, Thomas. You must know somebody who you think might be a good designer for the younger consumer. Somebody who is hungry to work. Someone perhaps who is being held back in his current position and whose talent and drive aren't being appreciated properly. Do you, um, do you need someone with experience? Well, not necessarily. I mean, it just needs to be somebody who is, oh, I don't know, Bucky, tell us what. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe somebody who wants to be an overnight sensation. That's it. You are astonishing. You hit the nail right on the head. Somebody who would appreciate it if we threw tons of money at him. Do you uh, know anyone that you could recommend for that? <clears throat> uh, you don't have to look any further. I'm the guy that you want. So, tell me about your plans for the wedding with Nick. Ah, well, the captain says everything is full steam ahead. But I'm advising that we wait for the storm to clear. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Thanks. Seriously, I, I really do want everything in our family to settle down. I want this day to be a joyous one and not filled with tension. Don't tell me Jackie's still giving you a hard time. I put a call into her. Thanks, Dad. I know she'll listen to you. I, I trust Nick's commitment to me, though, completely. I know that he won't let anything like his mother come between us. To be honest, it's really Stephanie that I'm a lot more worried about. 
So am I, Annie. So am I. Like, it's gonna be hard enough for Rich to make this decision. Choosing between these two wonderful women without Stephanie putting in her two cents. Dad, away. it is so much worse than that, though. She's not just giving Ridge her opinion. She is making sure that she does everything she can to make Mom get out of the way. As far as she's concerned, Ridge and Taylor are already married, and that's that. Dad, you, you need to talk to her and tell her to stay out of it. Honey, I'll talk to her again. I will. But I have to tell you, it's not going to do any good. Her feelings about this run very, very deep. And in the meantime, she's going to pull together every ally she possibly can. She's going to make everyone take sides. I don't want to get in the middle of this, so I'm going to do it smart, and I'm going to go right back out that door. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Just speak your mind. I don't have to speak my mind. I think that you know how I feel about this. No, I don't. I've always wanted Brooke to be happy, and I still do. But this isn't my decision, Stephanie. This is your golden boy's choice. It's just sad that two women have to stand around while he decides which one he loves more. I think the choice is obvious. Well, so do I. I think it's Brooke. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to you or anybody else. It might come as a surprise to your mother. Jacqueline seems to think that you would be better off if Brooke were available. Is that true? I don't see any reason to go over this all over again. Well, I think there's a very good reason. I'm trying to understand how you can hurt a man you say you love so deeply. Ridge has forgiven me. That's all that matters. Don't you see what Stephanie's doing here? She's digging up my past to try to come between us. I accepted you, Taylor. I welcomed you into this home. You thanked me for raising your children. Now, do you think I would really be the monster that Stephanie's making me out to be if your children love me so much? We need to focus on the children, not on Stephanie. And you, of all people, I thought would recognize that. I do recognize that. But I still can't ignore the fact that in a time of terrible grief, you made a choice to sleep with your husband's brother. I mean, how many other horrible choices were you making in front of my children while they were watching you like a role model? How can I explain to you what happened when I don't even understand it myself? Yes, I wish to God those things never happened. With Nick, with Deacon, but I spent a long, long time living with that pain and that guilt. And I paid my penance. It's not just you that's had a few really tough years. We have also, Taylor, while you were gone. And I, I know it's easy for you to just waltz in here and play judge and jury. Yes, there are some things that I have done that I wish I could undo. But there's also some things I've done that I'm very proud of. And Ridge is proud of me too. Now, do you think Stephanie's going to tell you all those wonderful things that I've done? Stephanie aside, I am still trying to understand how you can justify what happened. You hurt Ridge, which is hard enough for me to accept, but worse than that, you devastated your own daughter. You slept with her husband, you carried his child, and now you're allowing her to marry yet another man you've had a relationship with? That is really crazy, Brooke. How on earth do you expect Bridget to deal with this and not be affected by it the rest of her life? Well, you're asking the wrong person. I can tell you myself how I deal with it. Okay, I'm here. We might as well get into it. Just don't bring my mother up. And I know she came to you. 
I know she came to you to form some strange alliance against Brooke, but she's out of line. I told your mother to take a hike, but you have to admit one thing. Your mother knows her son, just as I know mine. He's going to choose Taylor, and that means that Brooke is going to be available. <laughs> there are three things here, Stephanie. First of all, I'm getting married. Secondly, it's going to be to Bridget. And third, you said you asked me over here to offer me your home? That's a bunch of crap. That's not why you asked me here. You asked me here to dangle a little carrot in front of my nose named Brooke to see if I had any lingering feelings left for her. Don't keep your head buried in the sand, Nick. Thanks. I'm marrying Bridget, and my feelings for her or her mother are none of your concern. You're right, they're not. But they are your feelings, and you need to take them seriously. You don't want to get married and then discover you married the wrong woman. You asked how I deal with the mistakes that my mom has made. <sighs> There's no question that what happened between my mom and Deacon was painful to me. It nearly destroyed the relationship between my mom and me. That just one night, one of the many sleepless nights that they stayed away crying and angry at everyone. So exhausted that I could barely think. I just came to an understanding. An understanding? I realize that's not a very good word for it, but it's, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just an understanding of family and faith and forgiveness. I realized that I needed to accept my own weaknesses and my failures and the failures of others. And I just had an understanding that no matter what my mom had done, or what she would ever do, she, she loved me. And none of her actions ever intended to harm me. And in that moment, I just let it all go. And I forgave her, completely. Something that could have destroyed us just really strengthen the bond between us. Bridget, I appreciate your ability to let go of these negative feelings. I really do. But still, I worry that you might be setting yourself up for it to happen again. If I thought for a second that Nick still had feelings for me, I would call off the wedding myself. We have all talked about this. I know Nick loved my mother once, but now he's in love with me. Nick is a man of his word. I trust him. Well, I'm happy to hear you're so secure about Nick. I mean, I wouldn't even bring it up if I weren't concerned for you, Bridget. Well, I have complete faith in both my mom and the man that I'm going to marry. We all live through the pain of what happened before. We know better than to ever let anything like that happen again. It would never happen anyway. Bridget and I are married now, and we have a child. We have a family, a family that I never plan on leaving. And Nick has made it very clear that his feelings are for Bridget now. I would never get in the way of that. So you're sure that Nick is the right man for you? Taylor, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. Nick, if you have any, any doubts about this marriage to Bridget, you had better face them now. I mean, why are you rushing into the marriage when you know Brooke might just be available? You sound confused to me, Stephanie. This isn't about my decision. This is about your son's decision. He's married to Brooke. They have a commitment. They have a child. And you act as though he's just going to walk away from that as though it means nothing. That commitment and that baby is exactly what Brooke is clinging to. And I'm telling you, she's going to be in for a big disappointment. And when it comes, 
She's going to look to someone for comfort, and I think she's going to turn to you, Nick. Well, I'll be just fine, because I'll be there for her. As a friend. Friendship is not what she's going to come looking for. I think you're wrong. You're a man that sees things as they are, Nick. You know what I'm saying is true. Ridge isn't the only one that has a decision to make here. You had better think long and hard about this. I hope, I hope that your answer is Bridget. And I hope that you love her as much as you say you do. Because if she were to lose you after everything that she's been through, it would be devastating. But I would rather have her lose you now than after a marriage and maybe the start of a family and you wake up one morning and you walk out of the house because you have discovered that you really do have feelings for her mother, you have a decision to make. And you better make the right one before it's too late.